So far, this class is focused on developing your economic intuition and exploring case studies showing how that intuition applies to the real world. But this misses much of what economists actually do. We use data to understand how economic models work in reality. That is, this course is focused on theoretical economics, or how we can use economic theory to explain the world. But most economists in the world today are more focused on empirical economics, or how we can use real world data to test and refine our models. And this is how a dynamic field like economics grows. Theoretical questions lead to empirical tests, which can then answer those questions and even suggest new theoretical directions. Let's take one of the theoretical questions we examined in this course. Does giving an individual government benefits result in that individual working less? Remember that as we discussed in the redistribution lectures, we might expect people receiving government benefits to cut back on the labor they supply to the market. This would suggest that the answer to this question, do government benefits lead to lower supply of labor, is yes, in theory. But what do the empirical data tell us? Well, suppose that you find that people receiving government benefits work less than people not receiving government benefits. Is this evidence that government benefits cause people to work less? Maybe. Or maybe it just means that people are struggling to find work are the ones who the government's trying to get the benefits to in the first place. In this case, working less causes the government to give you benefits, not the other way around. Or maybe it means that some third factor, such as disability, is involved. People with a disability typically work less on average than people without a disability. And that disability may make people more likely to receive government benefits. The disability is responsible for both the reduced working hours and the government benefits. This is an example of the biggest issue economists and researchers in many other fields struggle with, distinguishing between causation and correlation. Sure, people receiving government benefits may tend to work fewer hours. These two variables are correlated. But does that mean that these benefits cause people to work less? That's a trickier question to answer. My favorite example of the importance of distinguishing causation and correlation comes from ancient Russia. There was an outbreak of cholera a food and waterborne illness that is often deadly. The outbreak was concentrated in certain areas of the country, so the government naturally sent their doctors to those areas. But the people living around those areas began to notice something disturbing. In all the places where they were now doctors, there were more cases of cholera. The people concluded that the doctors were causing the cholera, and they rose up and killed the doctors. These ancient Russians confused correlation and causation. Sure, doctors and cholera cases tended to be located in the same regions. They were correlated. But the doctors weren't causing the cholera. Rather, the cholera cases were causing the government to send doctors. Now, before you judge these ancient Russians too harshly, be sure to watch the next application video. You'll see the confusing correlation with causation still happens even to the best of us today. So how can empirical economics help us sort out causation from correlation? How can we tell if more government benefits cause people to work less, or if doctors in ancient Russia cause cholera? The next video walks us through the steps used by empirical economists to address problems such as this.